Welcome to the award-winning Superhuman Academy podcast, where we interview extraordinary people to give you the skills and strategies to overcome the impossible. And now, here's your host, Jonathan Levy. Before we get started, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that you are getting enough whole foods and nutrients in your diet? Chances are you probably aren't. Look, it's not your fault. First off, it is expensive and time consuming and it's a huge hassle to do all the cooking and all the preparation. But also we know that our foods today, no matter how much we eat our veg, our topsoil is depleted and there is not enough rich nutrients in our food. And that's why I'm so excited about Ambro Greens, the latest product from one of my favorite nutritional companies out there, Ambronite. Ambro Greens makes it really, really easy to get all of your nutritional bases covered with just one teaspoon in cold water. The product tastes great. It gives you tons of additional energy, improves your digestion and gut health, and can even boost your immunity. Now, I have been having this in the morning, and as you can tell, I have a lot more energy. So I've partnered with the folks at Ambronite to give you an awesome deal if you want to try out Ambro Greens. All you have to do is visit ambronite.com slash superhuman. That's A-M-B-R-O-N-I-T-E dot com slash superhuman. And you can try the product out for just $9.90. So go ahead and visit that link to try out Ambro Greens today. Greetings, super friends, and welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's episode, which is lovingly handcrafted thanks to Chris Ward91, who left a five-star review entitled Transformational. Now, this is a really great review, so I'm going to read it out here. I discovered this podcast when I could have easily gone into a depression about two years ago. I searched positivity on Spotify and my life has not been the same since. These interviews have the potential to literally turn you into a superhuman. I've listened to each episode multiple times and I'm truly watching myself grow. Thank you, Jonathan Levy and team. Wow, thank you so much, Chris. That means the absolute world to us. I cannot tell you how happy I am that you are benefiting from our efforts. And for those of you who have not left a review, I know that's a really tough one to compete with, but we would love even if you just left a quick one-liner. On to today's episode... Today, we are joined by Andy Mant. He is the founder and CEO of Blue Blocks, a company which specializes in evidence-based advanced light filtering eyewear. Now, he started Blue Blocks not only after becoming dissatisfied with the quality and standards of other blue light blocking products out there, but also because he had gained a ton of weight and had all kinds of issues with chronic fatigue and lacking in energy. When traditional diet and exercise didn't work for him, he turned towards the research himself and became a biohacker. So today he's a leading figure in understanding how all forms of light, not just the light from our screens, can affect our health and well-being. He and his team have developed all different kinds of products and even gave us an insight into some of the crazy products that they are in the process of developing. Now, I wanted to have Andy on the show, not because we've never talked about blue light blocking glasses, but because I wanted to go much deeper into the research around light as a whole. So we talk about Obviously, we all know the blue light from our devices is bad for us, but some products are better than others. Some apps are better than others at blocking them. We also talk about sunlight. We talk about what times of day you need to be exposed to sunlight, how to know if you're getting enough sunlight, and many, many more things around that all important function we all do every day, which is sleep. I really enjoyed the episode. I definitely learned a lot from Andy, and I know you will as well. So without further ado, Mr. Andy Mant. Mr. Andy Mant, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you doing? I am great. How are you, Jonathan? I'm doing really, really well. I, I'm wishing I was in your summer weather down there in Australia, but uh, other than that, pretty good, pretty good. I'm excited about today's conversation. You know, I was uh, I was speaking to Dave Asprey about blue blockers, which he's known also for wearing a lot, and uh, and he kind of alluded to me that there's so much more than I got to cover in the last time we talked about them on the show that there's actually a lot more science that's been discovered recently. And so I wanted to have you on the show really because I know you're, you've done the work, you've done the research, you've done the science, and you've thought a lot about, you know, 
it's not just as simple as, as having an orange piece of glass in front of your eyes. We'll get into all of that, but uh, welcome. I'm really excited to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, the, the weather's absolutely fantastic here at the moment. It's our summer. So, um, you know, lots of beautiful natural light around, lots of sun to, you know, get that uh, vital vitamin D and, uh, you know, all those messages to our central body clock. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy and uh, alive and kicking when it's the summertime. That's for sure, as I'm sure uh, all uh, the listeners in the Northern Hemisphere will be, um, you know, really looking forward to their spring and summer, which hopefully will only be just around the corner and, and nice as uh, we've had here in Australia this year. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Andy, tell me a bit about your origin story. I mean, we've spoken before, but I never I, I never got the chance to ask you how you got into it. I mean, what what convinced you that this was how you wanted to be a part of the health movement and, and where did you come from and, and what brought you in this direction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a really interesting one. I, um, I didn't get into light initially. So I, I guess where my journey began was, um, you know, I moved to Australia about 10 years ago because, um, I had a work opportunity over here. Um, and I was also myself and my wife were pretty down and sort of miserable about living in, in the UK. Um, because it was just the weather was just awful and we were just a bit bored with the, the same old routines. Um, and during that time, I managed to get um, quite fat. I put on quite a lot of weight um, and I wanted to lose a lot of weight. And um, I just did the usual, you know, let's cut some calories and, you know, eat a balanced diet and see kind of what happens. And nothing really happened. I was just starving hungry all the time. So there came a point when I was like, right, I need to critically look into this myself. Like, obviously, what you know, organizations and governments were saying was was total BS and it wasn't really working for me. Um, so I took a, decided to, you know, sort of follow some health people on Instagram and um, Twitter. Um, and then they were posting studies. And then I, I was like, oh, there's like this PubMed type place to go and look at um, the latest academic literature. So let's sort of do this research myself. And I've Good always had a hunger and a thanks, man. I've always had a hunger and passion for it. Um, you know, learning, um, went to university in the UK and got a bachelor of science, um, there. So I always had this sort of, um, urge to sort of learn. Um, and I discovered at the time, and this was probably about sort of eight, nine years ago, um, something called a ketogenic diet, which was mm -hmm. not really heard of back then. Um, and started to sort of mix in those circles, lost a lot of weight, felt great. Um, slowly put some sort of more targeted carbohydrate back into my diet, put on a bit of muscle and, and, I'm here today sort of with a, a good sort of aesthetic and um, decent health. So where I got into light was off the back of sort of all this independent research. Um, I kind of got a hunger for, wow, I can really radicalize my um, physique and my nutrition and my sort of health by diet. Um, and I started to think more about my sleep because it was one thing that um, since I was about 14, so obviously went through a lot of hormonal changes then like puberty, that kind of thing as, as teenagers do. Um, and my sleep just switched, um, around about that time. And mm -hmm. for sort of 10, um, 15 years afterwards, um, you know, it was still the same, like not sleeping through the night, waking up, feeling exhausted, um, and generally just not getting a lot of like REM and deep sleep. And, and I knew that because I wasn't dreaming and I was just exhausted all the time. So I got back into the literature, back onto PubMed and, and started um, following people like Dave Asprey, Jack Cruz, Bill Lagacos, who are all talking about sort of this thing called a circadian rhythm um, and how this rhythm was tied to light and dark cycles um, and light at the wrong time of the day could impact your melatonin secretion and, you know, downstream effects would be poor sleep and, and poor recovery. So what I did was I, I found out that um, blue and, and a lot of green light actually, um, when it, when you're exposed to that after dark. So, you know, things like, you know, your TV, your smartphone, your laptop, less obvious things like your fridge light, your house lights all contain this blue and green light in very large quantities. Right. And it was telling our brain that, you know, it's daytime and let's, you know, stay awake and not get a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. So I discovered something that all those guys I was talking about, like Asprey, um, Cruz and Lagacos were all talking about, which are these like blue light blocking glasses. Right. So I just jumped onto Amazon or eBay um, and bought myself a pair of those initially, popped them on and my sleep improved a little bit. Um, you know, it still wasn't perfect, but it was an improvement. Um, 
and then I, I I had this sort of thought of like, well, what if these glasses aren't blocking what the literature is saying you should block? Like it was actually very clear in the literature. There's been clinical trials on humans wearing specific glasses um, with with different tints in. There's studies out there that show what the melatonin disruption zone is. And it was, it was quite clear that the zone fell between 400 and 550 nanometers. So all of the blue spectrum and about 70% of the green spectrum. And I had some friends that worked in an optics lab in Australia. And I just reached out to them. I just said, look, um, I'm sort of geeking out a little bit on light at the moment. Do you have a spectrometer that you could test what frequencies of light these my glasses are, are basically blocking? Mm. And they said, yeah, no problem. We've got that in the lab. It's stand a bit of kit and, you know, bring in a pair of glasses or two and um, we'll test them. So I got excited and bought 20 pairs of different brands of glasses um, and took them down to these um, these boffins down at the lab and just said, run these through and tell me what they're blocking and, and not one single one of these amber blue light blocking glasses were even blocking all of the blue light, um, let alone any in this green spectrum. Um, so I just said to him, I said, look, crazy idea, but if I wanted to develop a specific tint that blocked 100% in the melatonin disruption zone, which is 400 to 550 nanometers, could you create that for me? And they were like, yeah, a couple of samples, it'll cost you this amount, we'll, we'll get it done for you, run it through the spectrometer and we'll show you you know what we got so that was how blue box was created they managed to create this um this incredible sort of light filtering technology for me um that we then eventually put into daytime lenses as well at different frequencies because our light needs change throughout the day and i can go on and talk about that a little bit more later but i guess our flagship product was this sleep plus lens which is like a red lens and it only targets the specific frequencies that disrupt your melatonin so decided to um you know, start getting that on a lot of people that already wore blue blockers and just sort of explain to them what I'd done. And we had literally like every single person that was sort of a leader in their field in nutrition, health, um, circadian rhythms come back and be like, you know, holy cow, we've, you've actually got something here that, you know, we already wear blue blockers and we've just worn yours and the sleep compared to wearing those like standard box standard lenses that we have bought off Amazon or eBay is just a different level and like, how have you done this and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, we, we, we've been around only actually about two years. And a lot of people think we've been around a lot longer because we've, you know, because of the evidence backed um, and evidence based approach we put into our lens technology and the honesty and transparency about our lens testing results, um, both by us and independently by other people with spectrometers, you know, we've just gained the trust of people that, you know, are happy to pay a bit more for something that actually is backed by science and work. So, you know, that's really why I'm here today and um, how I've got there today. Really cool. And it, I love it. It's so simple, right? Like read the research and then produce something that corresponds to the research. It's not rocket yes. science, but so many people take that shortcut. So you mentioned blue and a lot of green. I think, you know, it, it's easy. It's, it's a, it's, it's a fun handle. It, it, it's, we all say blue blockers because it's so much easier than blue and green blockers. But I think many people don't realize it's blue and it's green and it's, it's some spectrums of violet. Elaborate a little bit more on that for me. Yeah, absolutely. So light, um, it's, it's very clear now in the literature that light frequencies. So, you know, a frequency of light is, um, like a, it comes in a banding. So for instance, blue runs from 400 to, um, 495 nanometers. You've got violet light that runs from about 380 to 400 nanometers. You've got green that runs from about 495 up to 570. Then you go into the yellows, then you go into the oranges and the reds. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the different frequencies of light in those bandings, they all play a role in human physiology and human, um, uh, I guess, functioning throughout either the day or the nighttime. So, for instance, um, blue light is um, essential during the day um, when it comes from the sun. Um, the reason it's more essential, it's essential during the day from the sun and not artificial devices is because um, the sun contains a balance of all the different colors of light, hence a rainbow. Right. Um, and the artificial light source has hardly any red, orange, and um, yellow, and just basically all blue and green built within its in its artificial system. 
Um, so blue light plays a role during the day from the sun in um, stimulating cortisol awakening responses. Um, it also increases the production of neurotransmitters um, such as dopamine and serotonin. Um, dopamine's essential to make us feel great, that reward response. Um, it's also on a, on, a, on a serotonin side that's needed later to mix with tryptophan in your gut to then create something called melatonin, which is an yeah. antioxidant and a sleep hormone after sunset. Um, what light does in, in the blue range is obviously it, cortisol keeps us awake and alert. So what we're doing is when we are... And green light does this as well, by the way. So once you go home after sunset, you switch on your telly or your house lights or open your fridge, you're sending the same message to your brain because it can't distinguish between um, your artificial or, um, or or sunlight. It basically right. tells the brain, right, it's 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 daytime still. I, I don't I can keep cortisol levels high. I don't need to start reducing cortisol levels. So over time, blue light could lead to things like ele highly elevated cortisol levels, which can lead to things like anxiety, low mood, depression. But more importantly, melatonin, which is obviously I just mentioned formed by tryptophan and, and serotonin in the gut, can only occur in the absence of blue and green light. So in darkness, in physiological darkness. So think of your ancestors. They would have come, um, you know, back from the hunt, maybe sat in front of the campfire. Um, those um, colors of those lights were reds, ambers and yellows. There was no blue or green present in, in those lights. So they wouldn't have had that same message sent to their brain. They would have had a more, you know, um, relaxed approach. Cortisol levels would have dropped. Melatonin levels would have increased. So when we're actually putting on the blue and green light after dark, we're telling our brain it's daytime and we don't need to relax and we don't need to sleep you know, well, so people might be able to get to sleep, but they're not having good quality sleep and they fill up, uh, wake up feeling groggy and tired. Then you've got other frequencies of light. So things like yellow light that makes you feel really happy. Um, it yep. gives you, it releases certain, again, hormones and transmitters that um, make you feel happy and, and really sort of, you know, in high spirits and good mood. Then you move into the oranges and, and, and reds, and these are very long wavelengths of light, and they're used to be um, in, in the human body to heal and restore, but also to calm and relax. So, you know, you, you see things like red light therapy devices that are out now where they give out a specific frequency of 660 nanometer red light, and then they give out an invisible light in the near infrared range around about 850 nanometers. Mm -hmm. And those two frequencies of light, um, in the visible red range, it repairs any damage to your skin because it's, it only penetrates sort of into the skin. Whereas if you expose yourself to art of, um, to near infrared light, that repairs any muscle or tissue damage that may have occurred during the day. So, you know, light in all the different frequencies plays a very different role in the body. And, you know, the fact that we've now seem to spend the majority of our time indoors, we're only right. really exposed to blue and green. We're not really getting much of the red anymore. Right. Um, and, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, well, I need blue light during the day, so I don't need to wear blue light glasses. But <laughs> yeah, you need blue light during the day, but you also need the reds that are balanced in there. You also don't need the amount of blue light that your laptop or your um, LED fluorescent lights are giving out. Because right. blue light, whether it's in the sun or whether it's in your artificial um, backlit digital devices, causes cell damage. OK, but nature is very, very clever. Nature always puts an antidote in things, you know, so that double edged sword, that blue light. Yeah, it causes you to feel awake and alert, but it also damages the cells in your eyes and your skin. But it's very balanced in the red light range. So the red light heals and restores and, and helps to, uh, you know, restore homeostasis in, in the skin system and in, in the body. So what we're doing is we've selectively taken out specific frequencies of light in our artificial sort of alien lit environment which is now having consequences on our on our health you know we're, we're seeing increases in anxiety and, and depression we're also seeing increases in skin cancer rates despite people wearing sunscreen um you know they, these things don't add up there has to be something more at play here um and there's plenty of studies on on that we can talk about a bit bit later but ultimately each color within the um, light spectrum plays a vital role. And the fact that humans have taken out and added in specific um, or increased specific frequencies of light has wreaked havoc on our, um, you know, biological and physiological system. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was going to ask you, I think a lot of us say, well, during the day, blue light is okay. But if I am understanding correctly, the stuff coming out of your screen, it's, it's, you know, filtered, it's, it's only blue, it's not full spectrum. So it, it really is a case mm. where we kind of need to change that light. I do want to ask you, you know, I for many, many years have used uh, flux, which is a software that adapts your screen, and it, it will change the color of the light of the screen depending on the time. So you tell it where you're located, it figures out what sunset is, and your screen gets more and more and more yellow and eventually red in the evening. Uh, Apple famously has come out with screen time, which does a similar thing for your Mac, your mm. iPod. H- how far do those go realistically? Cause I'm a huge advocate of the blue blocking glasses for my simpler devices. Like I have, uh, I bought a box called, I think it's called shift for the TV, yes. which does the same thing, but it didn't, it didn't work properly with 4k or something like that. The Kindle is a real problem for me. I love to read in bed with the Kindle. I I find it, you know, more environmentally friendly, easier when you're a speed reader to carry a hundred books with you, but the screen is so white. So, you know, for those, I'm an advocate of blue blockers and I wear them every night anyway. Uh, even though mm-hmm. including the lights in my house, the lights in my house actually dim and change color throughout the entire house, uh, as the evening sets in, but how far do those, um, solutions on our more sophisticated devices, you know, our computer, our, our iPhone, do those do the job fairly well, not well at all? They do it well. Um, but they, but there's also a, a and I always do this in, in everything. There's always a, 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 but and a caveat and a context to apply. Mm-hmm. So yes, your flux, um, or your night shift mode on your, um, uh, iPhone is great. Um, it will take out a lot of the blue light. Um, you, I've seen people set it to no blue light, which is a bit silly because you need some blue light during the day. Um, but what it doesn't help with is the light that's also in your office or Bingo. in your fridge or coming through, um, you know, perhaps the window after dark, that kind of thing. So you've got to bear in mind that because a lot of people say that, say, don't need your glasses, got flux. And it's like, well, it's not as simple as that. That's not the only source of blue light. Anything that's got artificial light in it, in, the majority of cases um, in, you know, your homes or your, um, you know, workplaces will have blue light in it. Exactly. Um, so the, the the issue, the but with um, flux is is twofold. So the first one is that, as I said um, recently, the I guess the the sun can't be mimic, mimicked at all. Okay. There's a lot of invisible light in the sun. There's UV and there's, there's infrared light. So you, if you're thinking, right, I can just have this colors of my laptop change throughout the day and I don't need to go outside, then, you know, the person would be, you know, very much mistaken. This is why I always recommend, regardless of whether you wear blue light glasses or not during the day, you need regular sun breaks because the sun spectrum, both visible and invisible changes throughout the day. Um, and nothing artificial can mimic those changes. And it's those changes in specific sort of shifts in blues and greens in, in UV and infrared lights, et cetera, in the reds that actually send specific messages to stop secreting or to continue secreting or to commence secreting specific neurotransmitters and hormones. Artificial light can't do that. Okay. So that's the problem with flux. And one thing that flux doesn't understand is, and a lot of people don't understand is that If I said to you, I guess if I said to you, Jonathan, when would be the most blue light from the sun during the day? What would you say? High noon. Yeah. So everyone would say that. Um, But it's actually um, and I've got spectra. I've got actually got a spectrometer now um, that I've tested this. Um, And one of my um, uh, one of my friends that's also into light has also tested this in, in the US with his spectrometer. The highest point of blue light during the day is at sunset. Sunset. So at sunset yeah so about so it drops down for about an hour before sunset the blue light will start dropping and then about 20 minutes before it completely disappears the blue spikes to the highest point that it's been during the day and i'll send you the blog when i write it in a few weeks i've got the data on on my um spectrometer um and then it rapidly drops to nothing um and it's my theory is it's it's creating a decrescendo effect It is that spike massive spike of blue that's sending a message to the brain that right this is the highest point of blue during the day that means that 
nighttime is coming, the sun is disappearing. And then when the reds come, that's when the melatonin starts to, you know, be produced. Do you get the serotonin and tryptophan mix in, in the gut? Yep. So yeah, it's, it's a very big thing where a lot of people think, yeah, blue light's highest in the middle of the day. It's actually not. It's actually from about two hours after sunrise through to about an hour before sunset it doesn't actually change a great deal um you know maybe a, a percent or two here and there which is those sort of changes in um light that send specific messages to the brain but it's actually yeah, about 20 minutes before the sun drops over the horizon that you'll see the biggest spike in blue so, so i'll share that blog with you i know it's so, so, so interesting, interesting. Because, you know, I've been told on one of the first episodes yep. I did on the show that one of the most important things you can do actually for your circadian rhythm is expose yourself to the spectrum of light in the first hour after dawn, um, that there's yep. there's a very special color of light in that first hour after dawn um, that, that essentially wakes you up and gets the body, you know, moving. I hadn't heard about the importance of the, the specific light in the last hour before mm. sunset. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll start hearing more about it. Um, once, uh, I guess once my blog's published and, and people start reading that, but in the, I guess in the biohacking circles, we, we've been talking about this for, for, for a while as, as a theory. Um, and it was just good to finally get out and test it with a spectrometer. Um, so and my spectrometer has times on it as well. So we did it at, um, 10 minute intervals for, for an hour. Um, and it was just so, so interesting to see. We were like, this is, is this going to work? Cause it was just dropping and dropping after the, um, like hour before 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 30 minutes. It was like the blue was dropping quite considerably. And then all of a sudden at 20 minutes before it went down, it just shot up. It was just the most bizarre thing ever, but the result we wanted to see, obviously, because we've been hypothesizing that that would, that would happen and cause a, a decrescendo effect. So, you know, the fact that going back to, I guess, what we're talking about with flux, the fact that it goes and it, and this is what flux do, it, it starts high blue in the morning and then drops throughout the day is, is not the same as, as mimicking the sun because it's, it's simply not mimicking the sun. And another thing that's, that's an issue with your laptop is something called flicker. So about 20 years ago, um, give or take, I guess, um, lighting was was via what, what they used to call incandescent um, light sources. So um, those light sources were quite high in red, ambers, yellows and, and quite low in blue light. Um, so there was never real a, a real big deal. But these light bulbs were really inefficient energy wise. You'd have to replace them every couple of weeks. Um, you know, people were sick of buying bulbs. So um and they used a lot of electricity as well. So in order to save the consumer money, they created something called LED lighting. Mm -hmm. um, and progressively over time, they've got more and more blue in them, but that's a different conversation. Um, and to make these bulbs more energy efficient, they put in um, not a continuous stream of, um, of energy. So they changed, I guess, and I'm no expert on on, on this um, sort of side of things, like how you put together a light bulb, but they changed how the current was put into right. the to the actual bulb, which caused it to flicker at a very, very high rate. OK, so you can't see it with the visible eye. Um, mm -hmm. But if you get your smartphone and stick it on slow mo and record your artificial lighting, you will be you'll probably vomit because it's just the most revolting thing you ever see. It's like going to one of those raves back in the day where they right. have the strobe lights on. It's like that. Um, and that really messes up your nervous system over time as well. Um, and there's, there's studies out there that will, will point to that. Um, there's no clinical trials in humans on it, but in animals, it causes, you know, severe sort of seizures over time and ne neurological issues. So, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I, I like to avoid the flicker. Um, so there's a better bit of software that combines flicker with blue light reducing, um, in your laptop. And that's something called Iris. So it was all created by a guy that I know quite well, Daniel Georgiev, um, and he's located in Bulgaria. He's a software engineer, um, and he's actually created it for the iPhone and for the um, uh, uh, Samsung as well. Um, and his isn't free. It costs like 10 bucks for a lifetime thing, so it's worth doing. Um, but it will, act, it will take out Flickr. So I've tested it, and so has um, Brian Hoyer um, in the US, um, who's um, a building biologist. So he has some really serious kit where he can test EMF and Flickr. Um, and he's tested Iris as, as well, as far as I'm, I'm aware. And it's come back with, um, yeah, basically no Flickr. It's er eradicated that as well. So you might want to have a little look into to Iris. Um, Flux does a job, don't get me wrong, but I, I prefer Iris myself because there's no flicker. 
Interesting. And how does that affect your battery life? Yeah, it does. It, it does affect it a little bit. Um, not, it doesn't like drain it quickly. Um, huh. I mean, as we know, the, the, the iPhone uh, battery will drain fairly quickly anyway, but um, yeah, it, it doesn't seem to have too much of a, um, an effect on it as well. But um, one thing that one other hack that I blogged about recently is um, there's a way after dark to turn your iPhone screen completely red um which is obviously the optimal color for after dark um so you go to like color hues accessibility and you you basically change your um uh, change your color palette but then you can create a shortcut where you triple tap the home button on your um iphone and it will change it from sort of blue to to red because night shift mode is great on your phone during the day but again i've spectrum tested night shift mode and it lets in a lot of blue light um so it's fine during the day because it's reducing blue light but it's probably wrongly called night shift mode because i simply wouldn't just have night shift on my phone after dark because it still emits quite a lot of blue in the 420 to 440 nanometer range which is mm-hmm. a fairly problematic lower end range of the blue um excites the, the body a little bit more than the higher end of the blue so um, there's a few hacks there. And again, people can come to my blog and see that, um, Very I sent it out onto the mailing list recently and yeah, it got quite a few, um, a few thousand views on that. And hopefully it's helped a few thousand people, you know, really protect their, their skin as well as their, um, their eyes. Cause you know, we can talk about it later as well if, if the time allows, but you know, the skin has its own circadian rhythm, which has exactly. just basically been, been, been released as well, which, um, can be stimulated at, 480 nanometer blue light um, because of the melanopsin receptors that are there so um yeah it's a lot of a uh, lot of new studies coming out on how light is really you know wreaking havoc on our systems but also you know the fact that it doesn't always come back to and it shouldn't always come back to artificial light like you know we we know how bad it is we know how to m- mitigate against it it's just getting that message out but you know, e- what is equally as important as well as being outside in that sun and making right. sure your eyes and skin are getting the correct frequencies of light. Get those sunglasses off. Get, don't be wearing sun cream. You know, I'm not saying go out and sunbathe all day. I'm, you know, without sun cream, that would be naive of you. That's what we wouldn't have done. You know, seek the shade in the high UV parts of the day. Build up your melanin in the morning when UV isn't present for the first hour of the day. Um, you know, it's it's just vitally important that people have appropriate natural sun exposure and also appropriate artificial sun exposure because those led lights that are in our artificial you know um devices you know and and in our artificial lighting in our our houses are are in essence mini alien suns that are just you know we we haven't evolved under and are wreaking havoc uh, on our health and and ultimately longevity all right let's take a quick pause and thank this episode's sponsor Blue Blocks Blue Light Blocking Glasses, the only blue light blocking company in the world that create evidence-backed lenses for filtering blue and green light. Their Australian lab-built lens technology is fitted into the most fashionable frames, and they can even make prescription and reading glasses in their optics lab. So whether you want to wear their Sleep Plus glasses that block 100% of blue and green light, their Summer Glow Mood Booster glasses, or even blue light computer glasses that don't have a yellow tint, Blue Blocks has you covered. Now, I like to wear the Sleep Plus glasses two to three hours before bed, and they really, really help your sleep. I also like to wear the daytime ones for reducing digital eye strain, headaches, and lowering stress. Now, Blue Blocks has free and fast worldwide shipping, and if you use code SUPERHUMAN at checkout, you can get 15% off any pair that you want. Just go to blueblocks.com, that's B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com, and enter code SUPERHUMAN to save 15%. All right, let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm actually seeing a naturopath for a couple different things right now. And he has given me a prescription of spending 30 to 60 minutes a day in the sun. Granted, it's winter now, so that's doable. But it, it's gotten me thinking, and I've talked with Rob Wolf about this in the past, that like in our quest to not get sunburnt, because you know there is real danger, but we slather on sunscreen the very few times that we do go outside. So we're getting all this blue light in our eyes, and yet we're not getting enough vitamin D. We're not getting enough sunlight. Uh, and we need to be out in the sun at least part of the day, a few minutes. 
Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, it's interesting you mentioned Rob Wolf, him and his whole family wear blue blocks as as well. As you know, he's so evidence based; mm-hmm. he only wears the best. So, um, you know, it's 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 great to see um, to see him mentioned as well, and him talking about the sun. And you know, it's it's so important to be to be out in the sun, like you said. We you know we want that sort of UVB light mixing with your cholesterol and. and basically synthesizing vitamin d and you see it here in australia we get 300 days sunshine a year yet we're the most vitamin d country in the world and it's just like are you kidding um but we also have the one of the highest melanoma rates in um in the world as well um and it's all about context when it comes to sun exposure um and the way that i've sort of read about it in the literature from a circadian standpoint is that it's very circadian um in in nature how we should sort of approach the sun so i'll give you an example of how someone shouldn't approach the sun they have a disrupted circadian rhythm so they're not waking up at sunrise Mm -hmm. they miss the morning part of the sun which is low uv so they are devoid of something called melanin which is an absorber of uv so it causes your skin to go darker if someone lives on the equator they'll have very very dark skin if someone lives in um, Alaska or, um, you know, Iceland, they have very pale skin. So very low melanin. Um, and then they go straight out in the sun, probably between 11 and three, they're either put sun cream on or they don't, and they will immediately burn because they're not, um, they're not utilizing correct, um, sun exposure. They will go into the house before sunset and switch on artificial light. That artificial light will tell the skin's clock system that it's still day and it doesn't need to repair any of that UV damage. And then, you know, they'll wake up in 20 years with a melanoma or or something else nasty on their skin if they keep doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Someone that gets correct sun exposure will have a properly functioning circadian rhythm. So circadian rhythm basically means um, about 24. It's Latin, circa, and diem. Mm -hmm. Um, And it basically means that all of our cells in our body run on um, a 24-hour system in line with the spin of the earth. Um, and this is, um, you know, it's unequivocal evidence out there that actually states that this this is true. Um, It's been tested and it's in all living mammals. And you have stimulus that um, basically start the clock ticking. Um, there's a lot of other stimulus to circadian rhythms like meal timing, exercise timing and temperature and environment. But, you know, as this is more of a chat about light, I'll talk about it from a light perspective. So the first in trainer of our circadian rhythm is the light we see when we get up in the mornings. Um if it's the light from your phone or artificial sources, your body's going to think it's midday straight away. Um, that's not good. But someone with a correctly functioning circadian rhythm will get up and the first light they will see will be the sunrise. And the frequencies of light that are contained in that sunrise start a cascade of hormones and neurotransmitters going that we alluded to earlier in the conversation um, that allow the correct hormone secretions throughout the rest of the day and keep our clock um system our our master clock system and the peripheral oscillators all functioning correctly like an orchestra um you know got these all these little cell clocks in every cell and organ in the body then you've got this master clock that's like the conductor and if one of those clocks is out of tune you're you're going to have an issue if your pancreas clock is out of tune you're going to have an issue with um processing um insulin carbohydrates for instance and we've seen studies that show that blue light can independently increase um, blood glucose levels, um, independent of what food people are eating. But anyway, I'll deviate off course there. So someone gets up in the morning and are um, watching that sunrise. They're also in a very low UV and devoid UV um, light environment, which is the optimal time to start producing more and more melanin. So if you're out watching the sunrise for between 10 minutes and an hour each morning and um, you're sat outside, you know, maybe doing it with just, you know, your, your bikini on or your, um, you know, your, your board shorts or whatever, or your underwear, you're then taking in a lot of this um, infrared light, the reds, the, the, the other spectrum of colors that are present, which is then building up so much melanin in your skin, which is preparing you for the UV light that comes later in the day. So if you miss that morning sunrise and go straight out in the sun, you've got ultimately none none of nature's sunscreen present in your body. Mm -hmm. So the UV is going to burn you quicker. Um, The more melanin you have, the less, the longer you can spend in the sun and the less likely you are to burn from overexposure to UV light. So if you're watching that sunrise, you can be out longer. You don't have to wear the sunscreen. Myself and my wife haven't worn sunscreen for maybe five years now and we haven't burnt at all um and we're literally some days out we were in the maldives a couple of years ago 
Um, and we were out from um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single day without sunscreen in the full sun and didn't burn. We like, you know, went very dark in terms of the tan, um, but we didn't burn. And then you saw people lying next to us, literally pink on day one and then turning, you know, right. um, sorry, white on day one, turning pink by, you know, day two and the rest of their trip. Um, but what we also do is we watch the sun set as well. And you get some very, very important frequencies of light during the sunset. So you're getting a lot of red after that big blue spike has dropped. So the, the colors sort of almost as the sun has dipped over the horizon, you get about 20, 30 minutes of all these deep reds and infrared light um, frequencies, which I mentioned earlier, um, it's been now put into red light therapy devices, which actually heal and restore. So, you know, if I've been out in the sun all day and exposed myself to a lot of UV, which is fantastic for my health in terms of producing vitamin D, if I've had a lot of it, it's probably going to cause some inflammation and, and skin damage. So exposing myself to that setting sun will uh, expose my skin to the near infrared, the far infrared and the um, deep visible red lights that restore balance to um, uh, or restore any of the damage that's been caused by, you know, that UV, that UV light that I've had during the day. So I'm making sure I'm protecting myself and using nature to protect myself. And then I also make sure in the evening that my lights in my house are red. Um, you know, it sounds like you've got some color changing light bulbs, which is great. Yeah. I physically only have red light in my house. Like I wow. will work outside and I only have red built into my house. Um, it's sort of goes a little bit deeper for me. I, I, the ones that change color, I'm not too enthused with because of the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi aspect of it. But again, that's unlight related. So I physically have, um, incandescent red lights and also, We've just created a non-flicker LED light, which will be a one of its kind. Um, no one else has, has managed that as far as I'm aware as, as yet. So it's great. We've got this zero flicker LED red light coming. Um, and the reason I don't want any blue light in my house after dark um, and, you know, the TV really doesn't go on too much after dark for us. But it, look, it's OK if people want to do that, if they're taking appropriate measures and maybe covering their skin. But I want my skin to be able to heal. I don't want it, my skin to sense blue light and not heal. I, you know, it's the study that came out six weeks ago showed that the skin has its own circadian rhythm independent of all the other circadian rhythms. So whether you're wearing blue block sleep plus glasses after dark, if your skin is exposed to blue light, then it's not going to go into repair mode. So people blame UV for causing skin cancer. And it's for me, it's, you know, looking at the evidence that's out there and trying to connect the dots it's the same as saying heart attacks are caused by cholesterol you know mm -hmm. cholesterol's doing its job and it's inflammation that's you know is causing the, the the damage um and the same is true with light it's the uv yes is coming in and and it's doing good brilliant things and creating vitamin d but yeah it will cause some skin damage but again nature's brilliant and the absence of blue and green light after dark was how our ancestors then recovered from any of that uv damage and the skin went into its repair mode after dark but we're, we're having all this sun exposure during the day inappropriately as well because we're not doing it from a circadian standpoint because people don't know about it going home and bathing under blue light then they're going to bed and then you've got street lights coming through their curtains you've got right. car headlights coming through neighbors headlights so the skin in the last 20 years has never been in a full repair mode and this, in my my opinion, um, there's no evidence that tells me 100 percent that this is what's happening. Otherwise, it would be out in the media. But it's just me conducing, uh, con concluding what I'm reading from the literature that the skin literally cannot repair itself. So the UV damage that's being caused during the day um, is not able to be repaired. If it was able to be repaired by appropriate light management, we wouldn't be in this situation of rising melanoma rates and skin cancer rates throughout the developed world. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I did want to ask you, Andy, uh, was also about angle of light. I know I'm jumping back quite a bit uh, from from kind of like the, the blue blocking, but I understand that angle of light is an important thing as well. Yeah, it's um, beam angle when you're looking at, I guess, um, specific therapy devices is, is definitely um, something that people need to consider. Um, in terms of angle of light um, from a, I guess, a blue light perspective, is that when you look at, um, I guess, light receptors, so you have something in your retina called um, IPRGC cells, so, um, so like um, retinal ganglion cells that are sensitive to, um, to light. When you actually look at where they're located in your retina, they're actually very deep inside 
the retina, okay? And they can only be stimulated by light that basically penetrates the, um, the eye from directly on. So a lot of people say, well, you know, you need completely wrap around, um, you know, blue light glasses because the angle of light can come through at all these different angles and, you know, impact your circadian rhythms. And that's actually not true. Um, light that comes in from different um, angles rather than straight on, you know, 180 degrees straight into your eye is actually not a problem given the location of these IPRGC cells. Um, and there's also no way that the light in a good quality pair of blue light glasses can rebound off the um, inside of your glasses and then into the eye as well. Having said that, like I said, I like to caveat everything. There are a few people that there's also there's, there's two sorts of well, three sorts of people when it comes to light. There's people that are ultra sensitive to blue light. So people will have things like migraine headaches um, quite frequently. They'll, they'll suffer from anxiety and depression. Um, seasonal affective disorder are all um, ailments that are not I'm not saying they're caused by blue light. I'm saying blue light causes them to become very, they're very sensitive to blue light because maybe of these, these situations that they find themselves in and these ailments mm -hmm. that they have. So that would probably be a good caveat for someone to have a fully wrap around pair of blue light glasses. And we do have a pair that fully wraps around for that instance, because a lot of people that come to us are, are very sick and very sensitive to blue light. Then you've got the people that are probably 99% of the, um, maybe 95% of the population, which, you know, Peripheral light is not going to be an issue. Angle of light is not going to be an issue for them um, unless it comes straight in through the eye. So a lot of people can get away with um, not having to worry about peripheral light, you know, majority of the population. Then you've actually got a small portion of Scandinavians um, that actually have no ill effects to exposure to blue light, no matter when it is, they're almost immune hmm. to it. Um, they can literally not wear blue light glasses and sleep for eight hours solid with four hours REM and deep sleep. Like it's just, these people make me sick cause I want to be like that. Um, and, and have the perfect sleep. So yeah, there, there, there are always in, in any kind of health and, and fitness and alternative, I guess, health, um, practices, whether it be nutrition, exercise, um, light EMF, there's always going to be outliers. Um, but what we need to remember is 95% of the people listening to this podcast will not be affected by the angle of, of light coming through, um, the sides of their glasses. Um, as long as they are protecting themselves from that front on, um, 180 degree light penetration. Very, very cool. Now, Andy, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you around other sleep hacks, any supplements you use, any devices you use to track sleep. I mean, someone who's thought so much about sleep as you have, I'm sure you've got some good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know um, Chuck has it quite well, who's um, one of the um, board directors over at um, Aura. Um, so he was generous enough to, to give me an, an Aura ring um, a couple of years ago, which is an excellent sleep tracker. I would always refrain from using a sleep tracker that ran off a um, non-native EMF source like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth consistently um, because those frequencies of light are really going to mess up the, the, the physiological system. Again, that's, you know, we won't go into EMFs now, but, we're, you know, things like Wi-Fi and, and, and Bluetooth, again, has been shown to mess around with blood sugar levels and, um, you know, cell function. So mm -hmm. the good thing about Aura is um, it runs off light um, and it runs off infrared light. Um, yep. so that was, you know, a no brainer for me to wear that. Um, yep. and it tracks my REM every day. sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And the good thing is you can turn the Bluetooth off on it. And then once a day you can take the ring off and then just do a quick, you know, 30 second sync via right. Bluetooth onto your smartphone to look at it. So it doesn't have to be continually on, you know, things like Apple watches, I would steer well away from because they utilize a dual system of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, but also they use green light um, to penetrate True. the skin in the wrist area. So as we know, green is not good, um, after dark. So if you're wearing an Apple watch, um, number one, my advice would be throw it in the bin, but two, obviously people do like them because they do provide a good, a good, um, way to track things, you know, just make sure you're not wearing it after dark because, yep. um, the green light will penetrate you in a very sensitive area where you've got a lot of arteries and things. And, um, you know, also, the melanopsin receptors that I mentioned earlier are sensitive to that type of light. So it will send messages to your skin and to your central clock that, yeah, it's daytime. So definitely ditch that. Other sleep hacks I use. Um, again, these are all sort of individual and you've got to kind of play around with them because 
I played around with a lot of things and they didn't work. Like I, I speak to Chris Master John a fair bit and he mentioned glycine to me before bed. Um, and I started taking glycine and it did, you know, nothing for me at all. Interesting. Um, whereas for him, it's incredible for him. Um, you know, Chris is an interesting one as well because a glass of wine or a beer before bed gives him a lot more REM and deep sleep than not having alcohol before bed. So, you know, there's so many different things you've almost got to play around. So I'll, I'll sort of mention a few that's worked for me and a few others that haven't. Um, magnesium um, didn't yep. work for me. Oh, um, okay. Works, works wonders for my wife. She'll take magnesium supplementation before bed and she's out like a light and she swears by it. So, you know, these are things you just got to play around with, see how it works. This is why Aura Ring is so important because you'll wear this and you'll be able to track it. Um, you know, try a week or two of magnesium. If there's no change in it, put it away. It's not working. Um, or maybe assess what else you're doing in your life that might be impairing the absorption of that magnesium or, you know, are you doing something that's counteracting that effect of magnesium? You know, are you, you know, exercising at 9 PM at night and then trying to go to sleep at 10 o'clock at night, you know, the alarm bells would start ringing that that's an issue. Um, and that's another thing I stopped doing. I started working out in the morning because I wanted to entrain my, um, skeletal muscle clock at the same time as my master clock. So I'd watch the sunrise, then I would work out. So I don't work out under artificial lights after sunset because that's going to really screw up your sleep so that's another good hack big one that worked for me um two big ones that worked for me number one lavender diffusing in my um, yes. bedroom for an hour before sleep yeah so that increases something called gaba um which helps you get into a really good deep sleep worked wonders for me absolutely wonders um and also having my the temperature of my bedroom um between and you might have to translate this um, because I um, deal in, in degrees uh, centigrade. Um, so between 16 and 18 degrees centigrade, which is Very quite cold. cool. <laughs> and I find that works well for me. A lot of people have have used things and swear by something called chili pad. Um, again, that's a pad that sort of can adapt to the temperature that you need in your bed. Um, my main concern is it would rinse my wallet because of the energy that it would use. Right. Um, so I, I just have a cool room. I just keep my either, um, I, I just get all the windows open, get all the natural air coming through. Um, cause we get a lot of like Perth, believe it or not, for a little interesting fact, um, for you is the second windiest city in the world behind Chicago. So, um, really? we get a lot of nice wind about 4 PM in the afternoon, all the way through to maybe about sort of seven, eight o'clock at night. It's called the Fremantle doctor because it's so hot here and it's desert. You get this lovely cool wind that just comes in every day at four o'clock and it's just bliss. So open all the windows in, in our house and just let that come in. Another big thing as well is that light can impact you whilst you sleep. Um, even if your eyes are closed, um, evidence of this has, has been shown in the literature. So there's two hacks you can do here. Either have 100% blackout curtains. Um, that'll protect you from the light outside, but maybe yep. not so much inside. I we've actually created a 100% light blocking sleep mask where you can fully open your eyes within the sleep mask. Um, mm. So I typically wear that. It's called Remedy. Works really well. Um, also red light. So um, sometimes in the night um, I'll still get up and need to use the bathroom. Um, and if I do, I don't want to be fumbling around for my blue blockers. Um, I just want to be getting out, going to the loo and getting back to bed as quickly as I can. Right. Um, so I have red light bulbs installed in, in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm not disrupting my sleep when I, when I get up. Um, and also another thing that didn't work for me, but works for a lot of other people is binaural beats. Um, so these are, um, specific sort of oscillations of sound that, um, go in specific Hertz and, and don't ask me what the Hertz are cause I've completely forgotten, but what they do is they mimic specific waves. So you've got like alpha, beta and delta waves. Um, and in that order is how you go into a deep sleep. Delta waves are like a proper deep sleep. So by pulsing music before you go to, or these sounds into your ears before you go to bed, maybe like 10, 20 minutes, um, your brain waves, it's, it's said, start to get into that deeper sleep quicker because they're starting to mimic the sounds and they're hearing these sounds and getting themselves um, into the, the correct oscillation. So binaural beats, you can just download it. They're, they're all over um 
yeah. uh, Spotify as well. So you can just jump on there and try some out for free. But they're really soothing. Like I felt so relaxed listening to them. It's almost like sort of Tibetan bowl, that type of sort of sound. Right um didn't really work for me um it didn't <laughs> have any negative effects but it didn't really work for me but a lot of my friends use it and swear by it that it just puts them out like a light so um you know and then it, there's some simple hacks as well like you know the blue light glasses are, are obviously great but right. you know the actual stimulation of scrolling through your phone is is enough to keep the brain active yes. you want to be in wind down like maybe read a book maybe meditate get the mind in a relaxed state you don't want to wire and pump that mind up before bed hence why i don't work out um before before bed um or in the evenings um i do that in the mornings um and you know power down those electronics maybe an hour before bed and and you know get your blue light glasses on or um read under red light if if you can um get those hacks in um so yeah there's 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 loads of different sort of ways to look at it and and i always encourage people to experiment for themselves because there is no one rx for for everyone there's a whole sort of toolbox of things you can do to improve your sleep and you know as, as i've mentioned maybe three or four work for me out of the 10 i've mentioned and those three or four you know two of them don't work for my wife but two other ones work for her that don't work for me so you just got to play around and you've really got to sort of test these things and the, the same is true with everything with nutrition with exercise you know what works for you know the guru that is you know the the, the, at the top of his game in bodybuilding or nutrition right. or a carnivore diet or a vegan diet that looks insanely amazing you know they, they could be that one percent outlier that you know 99 percent of the people are never going to be able to get to so you just got to ensure that you know you're on your own journey um you know light nutrition exercise it is all very very important it all comes as one not one is better than the other um, and just to experiment and, and, you know, take some of this information that I've given. And, um, even if people don't still understand it, cause we have literally only scratched the surface. We, we always encourage people to email us, um, just through the website. Um, so many people do from the podcast. I come on just saying like, listen to your show. It was amazing. I didn't really know too much about it. However, this is my light situation. This is the conditions I have what would you recommend I do? And every response is bespoke by myself or my wife um, and the others in my team that have been trained by myself to answer these questions. Um, and we'll give a personal sort of, you know, couple of paragraph replies of these are the glasses you need, but th here's a list of the free hacks that you should probably try um, in order to improve your light hygiene and ultimately your health. Awesome. Totally awesome. Now, I know we're coming up on time here, Andy. Where can people reach out and learn more? I know we're going to put links to all the different products and stuff we've mentioned here, but where should people reach out if they do want to email you, ask questions, stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. So so the website is the best. Just go to the contact page um, and fill out the form and write a question. We answer them daily. Um, so we'll get back to you. And um, if you want to learn more with um, either asking questions or not, I run um, a really um, decent sized group on Facebook. It's about 6,000 of us in it called Light and Health. Um, I think it's the only one. So if you just type that into the Facebook um, search bar, you'll find it. It's someone with their hands out looking at the sunrise, obviously. Um, and we have some of the leading experts in light in that group. Like, you know, people like people that I've mentioned like Bill Lagacos and Jack Cruz are all members of of this group. And, you know, they jump in now and again to to answer questions. But we've also got some very very intelligent scientists in there that answer any of the questions they know a whole hell of a lot more about light hmm. than i do um and even i ask questions in my own group sometimes because of the level of people that are in there so Fantastic. you know it's a very friendly group and you know even if it's as simple as like you know you just want to get some people's opinions on red light bulbs or infrared therapy devices or different types of blue light glasses all these people will, will jump in and they're friendly beautiful people that are just there to help um, you know, it took about, it took about a year to get it to that stage because we had a zero tolerance policy on anyone basically bickering or arguing. It was a place that is for, you know, really scientific discussion, but also a place that new people are very welcome that we post very simple things. And, you know, people post very simple questions that, you know, we take all take the time to answer and help people along their journey because everyone's at a very different stage of their journey. And we realize that um instagram's always fun as well to follow us on um we have a team that, that runs that side of of things um because they're far more creative than i am <laughs> typically when you've got a science brain you're not creative so i leave that stuff to them um but you know these aren't just pretty pictures of, of pretty people these are our real um 
you know, customers that are, you know, obviously beautiful people, but, you know, we're not posting pictures of models wearing glasses. These are our customers. These are their thoughts. These are why they're wearing them. And we, we put a little bit of a, um, you know, a decent post, not like here's Jane wearing our glasses. We're putting Jane's wearing our glasses. You know, she's suffered from stress and blue light was, you know, seen as being a core since wearing these glasses. She's noticed, you know, lower levels of feeling down, less stress, et cetera, et cetera. So we, put everything in there that sort of backs up some of these um you know customers that are they're sending these uh, amazing pictures in of themselves and you know we also have a, a a charity partnership with restoring vision um i know i'm going off topic a little bit here but um i think those three places are, are good to start to contacting us um we have a partnership with restoring vision where for every pair of blue light glasses we sell we donate a pair of reading glasses to restoring vision wow. who then those reading glasses on people in the developing world um you know it was things like people that need glasses um in that developing sort of types of, of countries um typically need them just to provide an income um for their family you know they're working yeah. in factories or um you know their eyes are deteriorating so working under such shit like conditions and doing yeah. sort of really hard tasks um and you know those those reading glasses are just fantastic for them. They, they're enabled to work. They can provide an income for their family. They can send the little kids to school. Um, and you know, there's, there's sort of stats out there that show that people that can have access to glasses can actually increase their income in these countries by about 30% within a year of actually having them because they're more productive. They're, you know, not working half blind. So, you know, that's a mission that's dear to our hearts as well. So, um, people that actually post a, a picture as well of wearing their glasses we double our donation to two pairs of reading wow. glasses so that's fantastic charities yeah exactly it's, it's something that we we feel we need to do we want more companies to follow suit and you know we want to give not only the gift of sight to people that can afford it through using our you know world-class technology and our lenses um, and our expertise for free when they message us but we also want to give back to those that can't afford it because everyone should be entitled to to good vision um and you know blue light is affecting their vision and they can't do anything about it so we want to help them where we can as well so yeah that's a Good big sort of drive for us fantastic Thanks, now andy last question i always ask before i let people go if people take one message from this episode with them and carry it with them for the rest of their lives what would you hope for that one to be i think that not to underestimate how important light is to your health i think is is very general and i think that people need to realize that this isn't just some fad um, and it doesn't help matters by the fact that there's a lot of companies out there that know nothing about the science and buy a load of glasses from China and send, sell them basically as, as glasses that are going to improve your health when they don't. I think that people need to wake up and understand that in about 10 years time, this is going to be mainstream um, AF everywhere. Um, right. And by then it will be too late. And, you know, if you're fortunate enough to be listening to this amazing show that um, that you have and all the amazing advice your, your guests give, um, don't brush over this one. You know, don't think it's woo. It's all backed up by the academic literature and take light seriously because until you do it, you won't realize how, mm -hmm. you know, suboptimal your health actually was even if you think you're doing it right with diet and exercise once lights put in that equation you will level up very quickly fantastic andy man thank you for coming on the show my friend it's been a pleasure thank you so much for having me it's been a real honor thank you thanks for tuning in to the award-winning superhuman academy podcast for more great skills and strategies or for links to any of the resources mentioned in this episode, visit superhuman.blog. While you're at it, please take a moment to share this episode with a friend and leave us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next week.